Sooners, of course, dominate in Bedlam. We did a morning after, and now we're going to go a lot deeper with my man Coop. All that coming up here in roughly 10 seconds. What is good, everybody? It's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports. Thank you for tuning in to the YouTube channel. I've got my my basically co-host here, Coop, on the Sooner side. Coop, what's going on, man? How did you feel about that Bedlam win? Felt better than I did regarding hunting. Uh, I told you guys on the last time. Um, the TCU rush out field goal caught my attention. I looked down. I'm watching an update in the middle of the woods. And I look up and there's like a 10 point box sitting right in front of me. And I, it just didn't go, it just all went south from there. So, uh, but Ooh. really, really loved, got to watch the game from the cabin, uh, you know, sip a little bourbon while watching the game. So, uh, man, it's, it's good to pull that out. Yeah, it was a great victory. I'm glad that we showed up and showed out in a way that was beneficial. So if you all tuned in, thank you for, like I said, coming to the channel hit that like subscribe and that bell notification we're dropping constant college football content i've already dropped two videos today and i've got a few more down the pipeline because we've got a lot of stuff to talk about so me and coop's gonna jump into bedlam initially and um i think that's what we'll stick to right now so and then later on we're going to talk of course recruits but let's dive into this game oklahoma walked into the door dominates those Cowboys in Bedlam, 28 to 13. Now, there was a lot of pluses and minus in this one. And so the morning after, I kind of gave you how I felt after I slept on things. Now I've slept two days and I can really digest what happened. And so I think I want to start off with after the initial reaction, after my morning after, now that we're on the next day, the thing that jumped out to me the most in that game was that it truly felt like everything we should have been this season. Like going from the Nebraska game to now, everything in between should not have existed. We should have been like this majority of the game. This was the type of offensive play I expected in the first quarter, talk about the other quarters after. And this was the type of defensive play that we would have expected from a Brent Venables type of defensive regime, especially bringing in the veteran presence that they have on top of bringing an entire staff with him from Clemson. This felt like a Clemson defense. And it just shocked me that, I mean, the, the t one touchdown Oklahoma State got was kind of given to him because that was not pass interference. We'll talk about that as well, but this felt like what Cle a Clemson defense feels like. Am, am I off base to think that this, that's, that, that would, that should have been? No, I mean that's exactly exactly it, and uh, we've got a little bit of the uh, the, um, uh, the I guess you would say the battered wife syndrome uh, because <laughs> I kept waiting for it to break bad, and the defense just kept on showing up and making plays, and I can say that definitely for the first time this year, uh, maybe 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 in the Nebraska game that uh, you saw a game plan that Brent Venables installed into this plan, and it was terrific. His zone drops yeah. seemed to be dead on. Um, the run fits dead on. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, you're, you're not far off. And, again, not pass interference. And uh, another big call, not holding on Anton Harrison, but we'll, we'll, we'll delve in that here in a second. Whew, yeah, that, whew, that holding was was another one that just at first, oh, that just made me mad. So, all right, let's jump into the game. Let's, let's let's get into our thoughts on each side of the ball and give give the people the goods and and everything. So, thoughts on the offense? I think we'll start there because I think the defense was the MVP of this game. And but offensively, we ran the pace that we should have, and we executed beautifully throughout the beginning. But then we hit that wall again. And after really thinking about it, Coop, I don't believe that this is what things will look like in a year. It feels like everyone is still trying to figure things out on the offensive side. And we get confused when we get to third down. We were like, what, one in 14 
on third is like third down is our kryptonite. What is up with that? Like no matter what, we'll get stupid calls. Um, we we can't run. The run stops working. So it feels like it's a, a combination of execution on our team, and it's at the same time as the ref saying, "Now nah, we're going to go ahead and take this away from you." Well, I don't know what is going on on third down, and I'm wondering. I don't, and I don't know if I could fully blame Levy. I I would love to. I would love to place blame on anybody, but it feels like it's a holistic thing. Mile pace. Uh, two first downs in the past two games. Uh, I think that this week it came out to 7% conversion rate on third down. Um, One for 14. And uh, no, I mean, your, your, um, your, your first quarter, everybody, um, that was perfect. I mean, his throw is just starting it off with Drake. Uh, Drake with the, the full extension, falling back, reaching back towards the goal line and the NFL, it's a touchdown. You know, that was, that's beautiful. Um, they scheme up a completely beautiful um, route and one busted assignment usually happens to us, but uh, we get to be the benefactors um, and you have uh, Chula Farouk running and catching the ball for the touchdown. Catching. Uh, you have catching for yes, change. <laughs> you have, you have some of the most beautiful, uh, and I'll kind of point out a couple things. Um, uh, Braden Willis, obviously Braden had that fumble, um, I think that that's another, I mean, that's obviously another touchdown, but what happened in that moment was he had the ball and he saw that I think it was Kendall Daniels was going low and he thought, you know what? Nope. I'm going to deliver this, but he couldn't do that. If he would have done the hop that he did later in the game, he just walks in. Uh, so, you know, there were some self-inflicted, um, you know, things that happened, uh, you know, throughout the game. And it feels like, one of the things with Dylan Gabriel is he just got into a spot where he was trying to um, press. And he was, when he started pressing, then it started going a little crooked. Um, yeah. We had another, we had another moment where we were, uh, we found something. I mean, they, they Levy found something and you can't say that he was a genius in the fourth, the first quarter. And then he all of a sudden just lost his damn mind. And, you know, the second to the fourth quarter. Um, but he found something with that wheel route because I don't know if I've seen that wheel route um, this year, and I'm pretty sure that four different players ran that wheel route. And uh, I think we have done that. it before. You're right. I think that we one. have done it before in some <clears throat> capacity. Yeah. So, uh, but you had Farouk run it. You had Stoops run it. You had Mims run it. And um, and so I mean, it was just beautiful. But uh, again, yeah, um, now I did hear something where. You know, people were talking about, again, I hate when this topic comes up, but uh, the quarterback's hands, uh, Gabriel's hands are, are a little bit smaller, uh, and he is used to playing in where? Hawaii and Florida. And so when uh, – and I think that it was maybe Troy Aikman was talking on the NFL about some people, you know, quarterbacks uh, come out of the warm-ups and they look really, really good up front, but then their hands start getting some of that cold uh, setting in. So maybe that's an issue, but um, I just gotta say this: is is it was almost flawless football for the for the first quarter, and then um, then it was just a, a struggle where we couldn't execute and get out of our own way. Yeah, that's what it felt like. It's more of a we couldn't get out of our own way type deal. And 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 I and I've talked about this a few times that, like I said, the third down piece was the one that's just uh eight me up it's like it was something that shouldn't be there we shouldn't be this bad on third the good thing though not there's absolutely no good thing when it comes to any of this uh actually in <laughs> Dylan Gabriel went 20 for 40 so it felt like we were passing a lot more late in the game when we shouldn't have yeah. we should have been running it but at the same time you know okay state was trying to key in on the run so I think that they were trying to outdo that and I wish we could throw more slants but I feel like our slants don't work because Gabriel's so you know, and he's throwing yeah. America and he's throwing, you know, I or in Florida where the weather is basically the same, except for it's a lot hotter when you go further east. Um, but the good thing is, is that, you know, overall offensively, first quarter was who we thought we were. And then the rest of the game, it got a little bit uh, squirrely. But we'll, 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 we'll jump from that. So. That's that sooner offense. 
I'm just happy that we were able to get up fast at 28 to zero and we were able to hold it down. The one thing I do like to remind everyone, though, is I'm very big on the offense helping the defense and the defense helping the offense. The way that happens is the offense keeps the ball and scores so the defense can get a break and the defense quickly gets the ball back to the offense so they can just kind of rinse and repeat. That's how you help each other. Defensively, let's talk about how we did on the defensive side. This was probably our best performance since Nebraska, period. I don't even count Iowa State. And I say that, and I don't say that as in disrespect to the Sooners. I say that because Iowa State's offense is really bad. Yeah. We got three picks. But guess what we got in this game? We got four. Four interceptions. Spencer Sanders was, Sanders was our favorite quarterback. He's probably one of the best Sooners on the field on the defensive side. That man was throwing it right to our dudes, and I loved every minute of it. And rubbing it in the face of all the Oki State fans, I know. They were, you know, they've been, they've been railing on me because OU hasn't been as optimal as we wanted, but I've been getting my revenge and it's been feeling great. How'd you feel about this defense? <laughs> um, so yeah, you said four interceptions. There's a case that if we could catch the ball on defense better, we might've had eight. Um, you know, Touché, you go Touché back you're that, right. There, there were several. And um, again, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you got a chance to read the uh, quote from uh, Lalalu uh, about after his uh, his interception, but basically he just says, "I just realized I had the ball in my hands." Uh, he said, I, "I did the drop, I turned to look, I saw the play, and all of a sudden the ball is my hands, and I thought I got to turn and run." And so you uh, you got to see some defense. Hey, and let me get some some stats for you here. Um, 25 players contributed on the stat line for the defense, whether that's a quarterback hurry, a tackle, a sack, a tackle for loss, interception, but 25 different defensive players. That's, that's nice. Uh, six sacks, also 13 tackles for loss. Um, you know, we are still, now we're tied uh, third in the country with 93 tackles for loss. And you, we have a lot of, um, we have a lot of stuff being said about the Texas defense and how good they're looking now. Uh, Texas has 80. That's 13 fewer tackles for loss. And they played <laughs> us. Uh, so Right. Um, we had no, well, we didn't have a quarterback, so that's kind of – Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 So, with all that being <laughs> said, um, 102 plays. They, um, outside of the first quarter, they more than doubled the time of possession. Um and I saw a stat that we didn't have a single drive after the first quarter that was more than two minutes on offense. We so didn't. Our defense was out there a significant amount of time. And here's another thing. How many uh, penalties did you see where we panicked and uh, just gave one up? None. No, yeah. Woody Washington. Zero. He, he, got, he got the uh, pass interference call. It extended their drive. And that's what, uh, you know, gave them the touchdown. There's a, there's an argument to be made that, um, you know, that that is called correctly. Uh, we're sitting here at 28 to six um, or, you know, not even that. And so uh, I will say this, I have never seen a coach in any type of anywhere who puckers up when it comes time to a, a game and Gundy puckers up so bad. There are so many games just in his tenure that I want to go back and look at and say like, you know what? You should have, you should have dominated us. Mason Rudolph second to last year. We were, I mean, it, it was a, it was it might as well have charged a toll to the receivers because they were just running yeah. right down the highway and he didn't throw the ball deep once. And so, um, you know, we came in here knowing that their offensive line was garbage and our defensive line took it to them. Um, the defense is getting better. They're learning. We said it. Two weeks ago, we said it last week, the defense is learning and we're starting to see some of this actually take place because, uh, I, you know, Oklahoma State has been a good offensive football team. It doesn't matter with the run game being as bad as it has been, but here's the thing mm-hmm. is Spencer Sanders came in like Superman last week and, um, I, you know, I don't know who he was yelling about on the sideline, but dude dude was handing out uh, the football and, it's, you know, he's 36 for 67 you got a sore shoulder you want to throw it 67 times in 20 degree weather not this guy 
Oh, no. Oh, no. If you're feeling like that, nah, man, that's one thing you don't want to do. You don't want to have to keep trying to warm that thing up and trying to throw it because I know he was in pain. And you made a great point there. I did not realize how they did not go deep at all, really, in this game. Like, that's something that you would have expected, especially since that's kind of the thing that we're, like, our worst at. But Spencer Sanders, what? What was his longest play in this game? I haven't even looked to see. So let me go ahead and pull this. Seven yards. Up. It looks like uh, average was oh, awful. He did have he did have one to Brandon Presley, which was fifty five yards, but that 55. was a short catch. Fifty five yards where longest. he ran across. Yeah. Yeah, he had so, a fifty five yarder, but outside of that, he also ran it seventeen times for forty two yards. So he had like two and a half yards rushing. So he was mm -hmm. this was not an optimal game for them in his performance. He threw the ball 67 times on a bad shoulder. In the cold. 67. With 17 rushes to go with that. That's 80, yeah. that's 80 basically in his hands. 80 times he had the ball in his hands and he had to do something with it. That's crazy to me. But at the same time, we we defensively did what we were supposed to do to slow them down and cause a lot of problems. Where th that you said what number are we with the, those tackles for loss? Number three in the country, ninety three so, total tackles for loss, tied for third. I've been saying this, and I'm I'm and I'm gonna say it this way because I've been telling y'all, y'all we I know we bag on the defense. We've been talking bad about them, but I've said the the. The bright spot in our defense on this team, with this regime, with this staff, is that you can see a foundation is being laid. Mm -hmm. All we got to do is execute on it and execute at the highest level, execute at all levels, at all phases of the game. That foundation is laid. Third in the league in tackles for loss. It's something that Venable's defenses at Clemson were known for. He is the top guy in tackles for loss. If I'm correct, let me go pull this up. I know I have the stat in front of me. I'm going to go grab this while I'm thinking about it out loud. But that's the one thing that Venables has been known for is being the team that gets tackles for loss. Yep. And that foundation, what does that do? That leads to good defensive play. That leads to that leads to ranking your defense from in the mid from the hundreds to the mid fifties to the top tens. That foundation mm -hmm. being laid is what you want to see. That it's not that we it's not that we just completely are trash on the defensive side. It's just that we've got a lot of miscues and the miscues are coming at the wrong time. That's what it is. And we're there. We're, we're, we're right there. We're at the cuffs. And it felt like this game was the one that it clicked for him. It's like, oh, if we do this on this guy, yeah, we'll be good. And then we started jumping routes. We started baiting. That, Yeah, we started everything. And so, moment. yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment because I know you've got a lot to say about the Bowman interception. That interception, well, you know, jump into it now. That was the interception. That was my play of the game. We're going to talk about plays of the game in a minute, but that was mine. Because that was an Ed Reed estique. That is a NFL level bait and switch and reading the eyes of the quarterback. Something <clears throat> that we have not done, honestly, since like the mid 2000s. Like even the Alex Grinch, big on interceptions and turnover guy, the players weren't jumping routes like that. We started jumping routes. The CJ Colden interception. What impressed me the most about that is that he recognized what Sanders was doing. He's like, oh, wait, he's going to try to throw this away. Even though he mm -hmm. gave him some yards, he's like, he's going to, he's about to jump the route, realize he's going to throw it away and just backpedaled right into it and just caught it over the shoulder. That's what you want. Yeah. I love it. Warms my heart. So, and I'll, that, I'll say this going along. Sorry to interrupt you because I, I want to point out one thing who on our defensive line is um going in the nfl draft on this one um mm -hmm. uh, it's probably jeffrey johnson he's like literally the only one that's leaving i think well, actually I mean, there's a lot of players like, aren't we what i'm going for is in this draft clemson is going to have two first round draft picks oh minimum the defensive line and 
and two linebackers that, you know, I think uh, um, Mel Kuyper, one of the other guys uh, brought out his uh, top 32, um, Todd McShay. That's who it was. And yeah, Todd uh, McShay, you know, yeah. Got, yeah. So they've got four of their middle guys going in the, you know, the, for the top 32. We don't yeah, Miles Mur- Yeah, Miles Murphy is going like probably around seven or eight. They've got them ranked up high. Yeah, yeah no, 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 you're right. And yeah, Bracey. yeah. So, yeah. I, this is my encouragement for Sooner fans is we're making these tackles for loss because when we do that, you are winning your individual battle and you're playing your individual role. And if we can do that for three and four downs, the product gets better. Not just one out of every seven or eight plays, but do your job, win your battle, and this happens. And what we see a lot right now is, again, Jalen Redman, he has been uh, a, a guy with big potential. Uh, Ethan Downs has, has shown a little bit of flashes. Um, Grimes has shown some flashes. And then you've got um, a two-lane transfer in Jeffrey Johnson. Um, you've, got, you've got guys like that. That's who our offensive line is right now, defensive line is right now. So if you start throwing in, tune into the recruiting piece, if you start throwing in some of the DL that we have coming in and coming up, and you got guys like Kevin Gilliam, and he gets more time, uh, Grayson Halton, he gets more time with Bates and Venables, this is going to be a deal where you're taking talent with good coaching, pairing them together, and we're not talking about number three in tackles for loss. We are talking about top 25, top 35 de- defense and we that that's got to be the foundation going to the SEC. So uh, the tackle for loss, these are glimpses, and it, it's going to be better. Yeah, exactly, and that's and that's what I want everybody to recognize is look and see if some of the habits and stuff that you need, even though the talent may not be there, mm-hmm. let's see if, if that stuff's there. And that's what I see with the foundation of what they're laying on this defense. And so we are building up one that will, uh, yeah play in national championships have the opportunity to at least all right play the game what was your play of the game and everybody before Coop told- goes make sure you jump in the comments and tell me which was your play of the game we've already talked about which ones are your mvps who was the- what was your play in the game folks leave it in the comments coop what was your play of the game um so i'm gonna say that um i, I can't argue with yours with bowman but just because so we don't both have the same one <laughs> I'm I'm going to say that it was the Lalo uh, interception, and here's why. Because yeah, Jonah Lualu had a nice. That was a nice interception by Lualu. He had we had tight coverage on the play. We had a play on the ball. There was no panicking, and there were people dropping into the portion of their zone where they were supposed to be. All that happens. What happens? We take the ball down, and he pops out of the four. Uh, so again, I, I'm going to call that just because it was multiple people doing their job. I love it. You know, Jonah Laulu, he, 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 uh, sorry, Laulu, he definitely did put us in a position with just dropping back and catching that tip. Hey man, heads up play. You love to see it. So of course, y'all know my play of the game is definitely the, the Bowman interception. I just love when a player leverages instinct like that flies across the board and snatches the ball because that was touchdown if he misses that he tips that it's touchdown but the beauty of it is is that sanders has been throwing everything short anyway wow right in the chest and he took it so yeah great stuff great stuff there of course, thank you all for tuning in. As usual here on the channel, Unprepared Sports, talking OU football, college football, and sports in general. Coop, thank you so much for always being there. Hop in the comments, let us know. Now that you've digested this more, thoughts on the game. Of course, I've been going back and forth with you all in my morning after. I'll keep going back and forth with you on this. We love to bring additional opinions and thoughts in here or whatnot. Hit the like and subscribe button and the bell notification. We've got a lot of constant content coming through. A lot of it, especially around recruiting. And uh, next video will be about recruiting. So with that, we'll chop it up with y'all in about uh, yeah, a couple hours or so. Peace.